Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is June 17th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, former director of the CIA, Leon Panetta, says Donald Trump is aiding and abetting terrorists. Restricting Muslims from coming into this country, doing surveillance on Muslim mosques, uh, is basically aiding and abetting the enemy. Panetta was referring to Trump's citing of a story that outlines how the Obama administration was actually supporting Al Qaeda. Then, attention mainstream media. The Orlando shooter did not use an AR-15. Plus, Alex Jones breaks down Barack Obama's gun regulation speech. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'd like to start off tonight by playing the blame game. And we'll get to the Orlando shooter here in a moment, but just in general, when we talk about terrorist attacks, whether it's uh, San Bernardino, Orlando, the Paris attacks, Brussels, on down the line, Charlie Hebdo, of course, we know about that. Who's to blame for this? And now why some people say a particular religion or a particular party, and there are arguments for those, but just in general, why can we not blame the person or persons who actually pulled the triggers, made the bombs, or did whatever the terrorist activity may be. Because if you go on social media, there's this very large section of people who want to blame everybody except the shooter. They want to blame uh, what he shot with. They want to blame the knife. They want to blame society as a whole, in general, uh, persecuting this or that group. But at the end of the day, uh, many other people go to those same types of persecutions and they don't choose to shoot up a bar or kill their co-workers or go kill people who work at a newspaper. And now we see that the CIA, as well as many other people, are blaming Donald Trump for aiding and abetting terrorists, which I think is completely ridiculous. And these are the words of Leon Panetta. He is not only accusing the president of the United States of treason and collaborating with the enemy. Well, I think uh, dropping grenades to him is pretty uh, collaborating. But, uh, but in many ways, what he's saying about restricting Muslims from coming into the country doing surveillance on Muslim mosques is basically aiding and abetting the enemy at a time we should be unifying and working with the Muslim community. Now, as I already said, uh, they're airdropping grenades to groups like ISIS. They continue to train uh, Al Qaeda jihadis. We've seen the hashtag I did not join campaign many years ago where people were saying, I don't want to fight along Al Qaeda Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on Friday be told out to go fight them in Syria. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But also when you say uh, some of the things he did say, like uh, possibly surveilling Muslim, Muslim mosques, I don't agree with that. But at the same time, that's not aiding and abetting the enemy, arming the enemy as they continue to do for many years, going back to previous administrations when we actually had our troops over in Afghanistan guarding the poppy fields. We've shown you that footage several times. Geraldo talking to the sergeant or whoever the commander was. And he says, oh, why are you doing this? He's like, well, we don't like doing this. It grinds in our gut. But uh, this is their culture. We have to put up with it. That's hating and abetting the enemy. And of course, don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. I'm not blaming the troops for that. I'm blaming the people who gave the orders. And it's not just the CIA here, whether it's college professors or the mainstream media, everybody's jumping in to dogpile on Donald Trump. And you guys know how I feel about Donald Trump. I'm not a, a Trumper, but I think it's asinine to continue to blame a man for actions that he had nothing to do with. I go out to these rallies and I see people, they blame Donald Trump for everything. They blame him for uh, a student loan debt. And I ask him, well, did you go to Trump University? No, then how is your student loan the problem of a guy who got into politics a year ago? That makes absolutely no sense. It's the same thing when you talk about war or tax or uh, the economy or anything else. These issues, when I'm talking to the you know 20 somethings, 19 year olds, 20 year olds, these issues that have been issues for your entire lifetime, you're blaming on a guy who got into politics a year ago. How could that possibly make sense in your mind? But once again, you're dealing with the mind. You, you've seen some of these videos we posted. You're not always dealing with the most logical people when you go out to these Trump rallies and you're talking to some of these anti-Trumpers. But to get back on the uh, gun issue, while many people are blaming Trump, they're blaming the gun, they're blaming the AR-15 or what resembles AR-15. I'll talk about that in just one second. Howard Stern, the king of the liberals, actually has enough sense to say it's not the fault of the gun, it's the fault of the person. And this is what he had to say. I'm so upset about Orlando and what went down, Stern said. But I can't believe these people will come out afterward and their answer to Orlando is to take away guns from the public. It is effing mind-blowing to me. And he went on to make the assembly talking about 
sheep and wolves. And he says, if you're a sheep, you expect, it, you expect to be targeted by predators. You expect the wolves to come after you. That's why you have the shepherd there. But if you don't have the shepherd there, what if somebody just came up to you and gave you a pistol or some type of firearm and you were able to uh, combat against the faster, stronger, sharper teeth wolves? Or the wolves may get to a point where they start to leave you alone. And that's the same reason why you have the Second Amendment in the United States Constitution. While, uh, while people will tell you it's about duck hunting and shooting targets and you know keeping a shotgun in your closet in case somebody breaks into your house at three in the morning, Yes, it is all those things, but it's also for your personal protection when you're out in the street, regardless of what the Ninth Circuit of California <laughs> may think about it. No, it, it says, says, shall not be infringed. You have the right to bear arms legally, as long as you're not carrying in a manner calculated to ca cause alarm, meaning you're not waving your gun all around and shooting up in the air like some drunken Yosemite <laughs> Sam character. You have the right to defend yourself. And when many people come after these, uh, these shootings and they say, Americans want to ban guns. I'm like, oh, really? Go look. Every time there's a shooting, a uh, massive g gun sales. You know, you can't go buy an AR-15 after an AR-15 attack or AK-47 after an AK-47 attack. And it's not because these people are being morbid or they're trying to, you know, dance in the graves of the people who passed away. They realize that it was an individual, not a tool, that committed these crimes. You know, I have a shotgun in my closet. It's never killed anybody. I hope it never will kill anybody. It's there in case I need it for personal protection. It's the same thing if you have an AR-15 or any number of other firearms. And as we're talking about the AR-15, this is a story that broke earlier this week, but it didn't get all that much attention, so I wanted to reiterate it. And this is the fact that the gun used by the Orlando shooter was not an AR-15, despite innumerable false media reports. And this is according to BearingArms.com. The rifle used by the Islamist terrorist in Orlando was instead a six hour MCX carbine, a modular multi-caliber rifle system, meaning that basically you can swap out the barrel for different calibers. But we'll continue in the article and you can see uh, numerous people who decided to come after the wicked devil AR-15. AR-15 rifle used in Orlando massacre has a bloody pedigree. It wasn't a AR-15. Why the AR-15 is the mass shooter's go-to weapon, it was not an AR-15. The AR-15 used in Orlando shooting is America's most popular rifle, as if it's something wrong to have a popular rifle in the United States of America. Now, um, I read the op-ed piece of the guy who said he got PTSD from shooting the AR-15, and people have different views on that. I'm not so much going to attack the guy personally. I'm just going to say my views of shooting an AR-15 uh, when I shoot an AR-15, it wasn't like holding a rocket launcher or a grenade launcher, whatever the guy may have said, in my personal opinion. Uh, but it was a relatively light, very accurate, medium medium range for even somebody who was a very novice shooter, didn't have a lot of kickback, uh, easy to operate. I thought it was a very fine choice. Now, once again, I personally wouldn't use a rifle like that for home defense, but each his own. Uh, if you go out to the range, uh, it's, it's a great gun for that. But... They want you to think this is just the most wicked gun on the face of the earth. It's for battlefield, battlefield conditions. Now, what you have to understand that a lot of people think anytime they see an AR-15 or an AK-47, they automatically assume that it is fully automatic. I was having a conversation with somebody not too long ago. They, they showed me a picture of something from a distance, like it was an AR-15 or whatever it was. And they said, is this a fully automatic rifle? And I was like, bro, from this distance, not being able to clearly see the rifle, just seeing the general shape, I cannot tell you whether it's a fully automatic. Now, if it's a soldier carrying, yeah, it's a good chance it's a fully automatic, but somebody at a gun shop or you know some guy out hunting, I can't tell you because there's a selector switch on the side that allows you to shoot fully automatic or semi-automatic or uh, you know burst burst rounds, you know three round burst or whatever else. So it's not what they want you to believe in the media that every time they see somebody at a gun, sh gun show buying a gun, oh, it's a fully automatic. Like, no, it's not a fully automatic. More likely it's not a fully automatic. And with that, they say, well, you can convert it into a, a fully automatic. I'm like, yeah, you can, but it's easier to press down your gas pedal and convert your car into a weapon than it is to convert an AR-15 from a semi-automatic to a fully automatic. And, you know, those comparisons go on and on. So just something for you to know before the weekend hits, it was not an AR-15 rifle. Now, this is brought up, talks about background checks. Did we do enough? Do we have the background checks? Uh, whatever else, on and on, FBI investigations, all this. And a lot of people said that there was no way to predict that this guy would do these things, even though he was radicalized by his father and 
He was hanging out at the gay bar before he uh, shot it up. But now we see this gun store owner. We called the FBI and warned them about the Orlando shooter. And this is according to CBS News. And the co-owner of Lotus Gunworks said Thursday his workers had a gut feeling about Mateen when he came into the store four or five weeks ago. Mateen asked for level three body armor, according to Abel. He's the uh, co-owner, but was told the store didn't carry it. He made a phone call and spoke in Arabic before asking for bulk ammunition, but the employees did not sell it to him. And the co-owner said, we contacted the FBI direct after Mateen left the store, but he did not elaborate on how the investigators responded to that call. So once again, you have a guy who went through multiple background checks. He had a, a security officer's li license, if I do believe, as well as the background checks he went to to purchase the firearms. He was tipped off to the FBI. Uh, he had multiple investigations by the FBI. Uh, the guy went through all the legal processes and he still was able to get a firearm and go out and kill people. So I don't understand how more background checks would have made this uh, made this bad guy go away. I don't understand how banning uh, fully automatic rifles, which are already banned unless you have a class three license, would have made this thing go away. And that's always a thing. We need to ban these fully automatic rifles. I'm like, no, I cannot go to the gun store right now and buy a fully automatic rifle without a class three license. And I don't have one, as a matter of fact. You also need a similar thing if you want to go buy a, uh, a suppressor or commonly referred to as a silencer. And someone's like, why do you want a silencer? Well, your silencer makes your gun more accurate. For all you liberals who say, well, I don't think gun owners are accurate enough. Why would you take away a tool that makes the gun more accurate? But once again, that is the uh, liberal logic. So yes, he was tipped off to the FBI and for all the background checks and the FBI investigations and whatever else surrounded this guy, he was still able to commit this evil, heinous act and uh, all the background and checks in the world did not stop that. But it has not stopped the Democrats from coming after the guns once again. And now we see that this is a uh, Senate filibuster staged by Chris Murphy of Connecticut. Uh, California Democratic Democrat Dianne Feinstein's due process busting terror watch list. Gun legislation appears doomed despite support by the Obama administration and the Justice Department. It is uncertain if Feinstein's bill and competing legislation authored by Senator John Cornyn will receive the 60 votes required unless a deal is reached and they are scheduled to vote Monday. Feinstein's bill would suspend not only the Second Amendment, but also the Fourth and Sixth. Cornyn's version of the legislation would allow the government to put a gun purchase on hold for 72 hours. And just in case you forgot, <laughs> we've shown the clip a million times, but Dianne Feinstein saying if she had the votes, she would take away every gun in the United States of America. Meanwhile, she has her secure, uh, concealed carry license. She works in a building full of armed police officers on site who can respond to any situation if she needed help. But once again, she does not want you to have the means uh, to defend yourself. And that's just how these people continue to operate. Now to transition to a completely different type of crime, we often hear the phrase, I was just following orders. I was just doing my job. Well, that's not really flying anymore because we see this, a guilty verdict for a 94-year-old Auschwitz Nazi guard. And the former SS sergeant who served as a guard at Auschwitz has been found guilty of more than 170,000 counts of accessory to murder on allegations that he helped the Nazi death camp kill more than 1.1 million Jews and others. He said he was ashamed and he was aware Jews were being killed but did nothing to try to stop it. So this is a good lesson for people to learn, not only that you will have guilt later on in life. I mean, the guy's 94 years old. He still feels guilty about this, but also that your crimes will catch up to you. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. And that's exactly what this guy is feeling. And I hope this would be a lesson to people who are involved in government. Of course, you know, not too many stories nowadays about putting people in ovens, but There's plenty of tyranny going on in the government, but people are starting to push back from this. And we see this story right here. Dozens of State Department officials just revolted against Obama's Syria policy. At least 51 mid to high level State Department officials have signed a dissent channel cable breaking with President Obama's policy on Syria and calling for U.S. airstrikes on the regime of Syrian President Bashar Assad. The cable was provided to several news outlets on Thursday, including the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. But the point about this is that people are saying like, no, enough is enough. As I mentioned earlier, people in the military saying hashtag I did not join, referring to uh, the situation in Syria. And of course, we're not saying Assad's a good guy. We're not cheerleading for anything like that. But you have to look at what happened in Libya. You know, we came, we saw he died. 
are the American people any safer now that Gaddafi is gone? Absolutely not. Gaddafi wasn't a good guy, but he was a regional issue. You know, when you take away Gaddafi, now he's replaced by international terrorists who would love to come over here and kill Americans. So are Americans safer? Absolutely not. Are Libyans safer now that Gaddafi is gone? Absolutely not. You need to know what you're doing and have a realistic plan before you go overseas and play Team America World Police. Now, uh, something unusual that the police had to respond to overseas in Pakistan in particular was a woman throwing acid in a man's face because he refused to marry her. Now, we do hear about these type of honor, well, not killings, but honor assaults about men who throw the acid on women, but this is very unusual. Uh, she wanted him to marry her so she could divorce her husband. They were involved in an affair. He said no, and the rest is history. And briefly, before we go into other special reports, Philly has a soda tax, and this is Philadelphia on Thursday, came, became the first major city in the United States to enact a soda tax, with the city council approving a 1.5 cent per ounce levy on sugary and artificially sweetened beverages. His big brother can get to you. We'll be back right after this with more special reports. For months now, Bernie Sanders and his supporters have been saying that the DNC has rigged this election all along in favor of Hillary Clinton. Now, maybe intuitively we know that that might be true, but now we have definitive proof that that is indeed what was happening all along. And in fact, the DNC used the media to rig the election in Hillary Clinton's favor. Now, we know this because of those leaked documents from Guccifer 2.0, and the media largely has just focused on the fact that these uh, documents or the DNC's Trump opposition strategy. But what they're largely overlooking, uh, on purpose of course, is the fact that these emails show that the DNC colluded with mainstream outlets to heavily favor Hillary Clinton. Now, uh, one of these first emails dates from May 26, 2015, and it says, our goals in the coming months will be to frame the Republican field and the eventual nominee early, and to provide a contrast between the GOP field and HRC. Hillary Rodham Clinton. So this is more than a year ago. They're already saying whoever that Republican nominee is going to be, we need to set him up in opposition of HRC. Now, there's another document that states some strategies for positioning and public message. It says, use specific hits to muddy the waters around ethics, transparency, and campaign finance attacks on HRC. So they already know she's going to be the Democratic nominee and they need to do everything they can to build support for her. And they also knew things were gonna get really dirty with Hillary Clinton. So then there's another document under the heading tactics. It says, working with the DNC and allied groups will use several different methods to land these attacks, including reporter outreach. So they're gonna work through the DNC and others, select briefings, prep with reporters for interviews for GOP candidates, off the record conversations, and oppo pitches to help pitch stories with no fingerprints and utilize reporters to drive a message. So they were gonna have these off the record conversations with reporters so that they could plant their agenda and then get the reporters to go and press the Republicans with the, the DNC's agenda that was already heavily in, in Hillary Clinton's favor. Uh, Guccifer 2.0 also leaked a two page document listed HRC election plans, and it includes a talking point that appeared word for word in Clinton's video announcement in her bid to run for president. She said, Americans have fought their way back from tough economic times, but the deck is still stacked for those at the top. So as Claire Burnish points out, this is totally ironic that Hillary Rodham Clinton is talking about stacked decks for the elite, when this is exactly what the DNC is doing for her. So we already can, acknowledged that the mainstream media was heavily in favor of Hillary Clinton throughout this 2016 election cycle so far. Uh, they downplayed the success of Bernie Sanders, even though there were 80,000 people filling up stadiums while Hillary Clinton could barely even fill a room. They were totally downplaying his success. And then they only started to really talk about Bernie Sanders and highlight him once they could attack his violent protesters, telling Bernie, you know, tell your, your attack mob to stand down. Well, turns out, I mean, these people are paid protesters from pro-Hillary Clinton groups. So they were being used as useful idiots, being paid to go protest Donald Trump events, Donald Trump rallies, when Bernie Sanders' real competition up until a couple weeks ago was Hillary Clinton. So they really should have been, all of his Sanders supporters should have been going after Hillary Clinton, but they were being paid to go this way. So 
Now that we have these leaked documents, Debbie Wasserman Schultz needs to step down. Obviously, she was rigging the game in favor of Hillary Clinton from the offset. But it also proves, even without the superdelegate count, where Hillary Clinton was 15 percent ahead of, in the race before it even started, with this, we can see that the game was rigged in Hillary Clinton's favor from the outset. It appears that the TV watchers of America need to be reminded yet again that any fair play you had expected in mainstream media is dead. Your right to not be lied to by the State Department was executed quietly on the floor of the U.S. Congress on July 2, 2013, when the smith munn Act, essentially an anti-propaganda law signed on January 27, 1948 by President Harry S. Truman, was nullified by the NDAA of 2013. The smith munn Act was created to wipe out the influence of any communist, New World Order infiltration in the U.S. State Department with a grip on the mind of the average American citizen. In 1948, following the onslaught of the Nazi propaganda machine and the propaganda being doled out to the American people by the United States Office of War Information and World War I's Committee on Public Information, steps were taken by Congress to ensure that the American people would not be affected by a compromised State Department that could easily twist the information being told to the American people for foreign political gain. Congressional committee members were leery of the State Department because, as House Rules Committee Chairman Eugene Cox said, the State Department was chock full of reds. The Congress of 1948 called for a house cleaning of some folks in the State Department to keep only those people whose first loyalty is to the United States. Fast forward to the Congress in June of 2016, and New World Order propaganda is pouring right out of the State Department in order to complete the New World Order agenda in Eurasia. Kurt Nimmo writes, Advocates of illegal military intervention in Syria to force out Bashar al-Assad signed an internal memo protesting the current Obama administration policy, according to a report posted by the Wall Street Journal. The memo sent by more than 50 rank-and-file officials calls for a judicious use of standoff and air weapons which would undergird and drive a more focused and hard-nosed U.S.-led diplomatic process. It was sent through the dissent channel at the State Department. In addition to increased military intervention by the United States, the memo calls for more support for moderate rebel forces fighting against the Syrian government. There are currently few, if any, moderate rebels in Syria. The Free Syrian Army and the other so-called moderate rebels have functioned largely as a public relations front, while the actual fighting is done by al-Nusra and other jihadi groups supported by Saudi Arabia. And now the sycophantic talking heads are following suit, ignoring the monstrous jihad landing on American shores under the cloak of the Obama administration and blaming Donald Trump for ISIS, the one candidate just as concerned about the coming caliphate as a majority of the American people. The thing about Trump, though, is that uh, he's the recruiter in chief. He is, For ISIS. He is basically working with ISIS yes. Yes. to kill us. They are working together. Every time you go after the Muslims and you talk about how they shouldn't come into the country and how they're all a bunch of whatevers, you are saying to ISIS, make another video to show people who are sympathetic to your cause. And don't think they haven't made many videos showing Donald Trump. He is a dangerous menace to the country. I'm sorry, Ms. Behart. Obama has brought in over one million Muslims during his time in office. And according to a Pew Research poll, 60% of Muslim Americans under the age of 30, jihad age, are more loyal to Islam than America. And Ms. Behart, if you're ignorant on what that means, just ask a Muslim. But here's former CIA director Leon Panetta to keep the propaganda moving. Uh, he's not only accusing president of the United States of treason uh, and collaborating with the enemy, uh, but in many ways what he's saying about uh, restricting Muslims from coming into this country, doing surveillance on Muslim mosques, uh, is basically aiding and abetting the enemy at a time when we ought to be unifying, working with the Muslim community.
to try to protect against future attacks. As we descend headlong into the final stretch of the presidential election, the Infowar is heating up like a white hot fire poker. The New World Order is manning every cannon on its enemy warship of blatant lies firing on a diminishing population of gullible minds as a growing majority of Americans' eyes are opening to the horrible truth. John Bound for Infowars.com. It is only two minutes and two seconds long, and it is the most sickening, total disinformation I have ever heard in my life. In fact, in fact I'm going to play it right now from the start, but stop and dissect each piece of it one more time. Let's cue that up, and then let's just go through it piece by piece, okay? So just be ready every few seconds to stop it. Go ahead and roll pure deception. Here it is. If we really want to help law enforcement protect Americans from homegrown extremists. Impossible. If we really want to help law enforcement... Protect us from homegrown extremists. Do you catch both the lies? They've been blocking law enforcement at every turn on record systematically with these mosques and coordinating with the mosque. There's a total pattern now. With the foreign governments financing it at the local level, but also at the national level, giving campaign money to Obama and Hillary and other Democrats. I mean, this is un unprecedentedly evil. This is espionage. This is foreign infiltration. So if we really want to help law enforcement stop homegrown extremists, this is not homegrown. This is foreign financed run, pledged allegiance to ISIS, directed by ISIS, part of the ISIS cult. It's like a way of life. It's directed. You buy into it. You get the book. You get the publications. You follow it. Total lies. And what, we're eight seconds into it? How many seconds into the two-minute clip are we? Eight seconds, exactly. Yeah, eight seconds in. Let's back it up again and just start from the beginning, and then I'll let it go forward. Just play it. Go ahead, please. If we really want to help law enforcement protect Americans from <sighs> homegrown extremists, the kind of tragedies that occurred at San Bernardino and that now have occurred in Orlando. It possible. Let's go all the way. I'm going to start at the start, from the very start of the clip. San Bernardino and Orlando. I mean, we had Army, Navy, Marine Corps shooting. We had Fort Hood. We had all these others, and they won't say it's jihad there. And he's up there using what they have helped happen to go after the American people's sacred right that started the Revolutionary War in 1775 that was officiated in 1776, July 4th. That's what it's all about. They're striking at the heart of it, these vipers. I mean, this guy is such a viper. I mean, just look at this guy, look at him. I mean, uh, we it's twilight zone that our elite are this soft, even though they're corrupt, would put something this venomous in office that just wants to engage in the bizarre ritual of bringing in these horrible, filthy jihadis to then kill us and then blame us for it. We have to make it harder for people who want to kill Americans to get their hands on weapons. All right, pause. Back it up 10 seconds. I'm sorry, we had to do this as a, as a whole college class. I could spend, I could teach a one-year course on this two-minute, two-second clip. Seriously. Just analyzing, every, this is pure satanic eat lies. I mean, only the devil could string something together that is a pure lie from, from start to finish. He just said that if we want to stop this, we've got to have meaningful controls. When this guy worked for an international security company contracted by Homeland Security and is running around with licensed guns in New York and Florida and casing the joint and co-workers are warning about him, threatening to kill people, but the boss is politically correct at the globalist security company, it's beyond that, and won't do anything, and the FBI comes twice and is ordered to stand down, and his imam is saying, kill gays, his father is on YouTube saying, kill gays, and then Obama blames the American people and the Second Amendment and lies and says that there was no background check and nothing was done to stop him, and at the end of the clip threatens everyone cryptically 
and says there's going to be more of these and they're going to get bigger. Oh, we know you're going to have your people go into a school and kill 300 school kids. I just can see it. I've said nightclubs, schools, elementary kids, and then get ready. They're going to come out and blame John Wayne, folks. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let's continue with the pure deception. We have to make it harder for people who want to kill Americans to get their hands on weapons of war that let them kill dozens of innocents. It is absolutely true. We cannot prevent every tragedy. All right, back it up, Ted. We, the American people, our right is allowing weapons of war to get to jihadis when he's funded jihadis all over the Middle East to overthrow countries and ship high-impact tow missiles, Stinger missiles, anti-tank, anti-aircraft weapons to the people who are running around murdering Christians in mass by the hundreds of thousands. He and Hillary are openly shipping them the weapons. They're openly on the payroll. And then they turn around and say that we are giving jihadi weapons. No. And then we learn in Fast and Furious that they're shipping guns to Mexico to the jihadis. That's confirmed. So see, everything they're accusing us of is exactly what he's doing. If you invert what he's saying, he's saying, we got our sleeper cells in place in America. There's a lot of attacks coming. Get ready for it. We're going to blame your Second Amendment, and your free speech, and we're going to take everything you got. I mean, this is so evil. They sit down with the speechwriters and they write this stuff, just shoveling it at you. And all the leftists go on their Facebook walls and, they run around on their different websites and they, they go, Alex, are you proud of yourself now? And emails I've got, you Americans with your guns, when are you going to stop it? Whoa. And guess what they're now saying? They're taking down the Facebook pages of people that say that. And there's liberal outrage. How dare you imply this was an organized Islamic plot? How dare you our cult leader says it wasn't. It was America's fault. He said so. I mean, what is it we won't put up with? You're in a cult, folks, if you follow this. It is absolutely true. We cannot prevent every tragedy. <sighs> but we know that, consistent with the Second Amendment, there are common sense steps that could reduce gun violence and could reduce the lethality. It possible. None of them are common sense. All the stuff they want's already in place. They keep acting like it wasn't. They keep acting like he didn't have a license. They keep acting like he wasn't hooked into Homeland Security. They keep acting like his dad didn't visit the White House. They keep acting like his brother doesn't work with contractors in Homeland Security, bringing in more jihadis. They keep acting like they're not protecting the mosque. They keep acting like all of this, again, just we need some common sense. Come on, America. We had Americans. We had an American do this. Americans are doing some bad stuff. We just need to take their guns and their speech. We should give ATF the resources they need to enforce the gun laws that we already have. They expand the gun grabbers. People with possible ties to terrorism who aren't allowed on a plane. Yeah, get rid of due process. Should be allowed to buy a gun. This guy worked for Homeland Security. Enough talking about being tough on terrorism. All right, Actually, be tough. Uh, oh, yeah. Qu quit talking about being tough. Actually, be tough and help fund Al Qaeda, now known as ISIS to invade all these countries and overthrow our allies in Egypt and other areas. This is incredible. This guy is running an Islamic jihad invasion into our country. He went to madrasas as a child. He is literally attacking our nation. Literally. You can, you can say he's the head of Al Qaeda in the United States. He is. He is funding it. He is protecting it. I, I talked to federal sources. They said, no, absolutely, we know. We know Hillary is on their payroll. We know they're getting funding from the same group that funds ISIS. We know. We are literally ordered to do nothing. Oh, but they want to pass more laws, taking more of our liberties to use it against the American people. And stop making it easy as possible for terrorists to buy assault weapons. Okay. Terrorist. Reinstate the assault weapons ban. Make it harder for terrorists to use these weapons to kill us. Ban the guns. Otherwise... Despite extraordinary efforts across our government, by local law enforcement, by our intelligence agencies, by our military, despite all the sacrifices that folks make, these kinds of events are going to keep on happening. And the weapons are only going to get more powerful. Oh, yeah, I bet you're cooking something up big, brother. <sighs> it's 
a very dangerous time to be alive, folks. They're making their move. This is the attempted takedown of America. God help us. I I've never seen anything this naked, anything this brazen, anything this deceptive. This is truly sick. Yeah. We tend to see that a lot of times. <laughs> Because when you get a Ford Bell, you don't really choose to spend it. Well, I mean, I went to a Hillary Clinton event in California and a Bernie Sanders, and there were Trump protesters on the outside, and all of them did was shake people's hands and ask them questions why they liked Hillary. Right. I said, and I looked at all the people, I was like, isn't it kind of awesome that you guys can go into a, a rally and come out and not be spit they're, on, they're not have them. eggs thrown at you, they're not called derogatory them. names, not punched, right. not assaulted, not having your car kicked? So it's kind of nice to be able to come out of it and not be harassed and accosted, yeah, right? First but we can't have that when we go to events. First responders shouldn't be that way. Hey, all they got to do is turn their wheelchair the brakes off. So it looks like we're getting ready to get pushed to the sidewalk over here. That's how easy this Hey, everybody, move this way. Get ready. We're going to start going this. All right, we're all going back. Let's go back. So Michael Zimmerman is on the anti-Trump side right now, blending in. This is Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. I'm on the Trump side right now. I was able to get in behind a camera crew, even though I have press credentials. And now that side over there has become very violent from time to time. And now they're allowing us to finally get out of here. Oh, looks like there's a big scuffle going on again. If you notice on this side, very peaceful. No one's pushing over here, no one's being violent. It's okay, they can do that. Alright, come on guys. Stop moving back, please. Stop moving back, there's an exit gate over there. Looks like they're pushing everybody here out this way to leave so we can go down the sidewalk. Yeah, I do every day. I've been on Yeah. I was just on Hagman and Hagman. We're not going Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, brother. Have a good one, man. Hey, man, you guys be safe. Have a good one. Thanks. Those cops watch Info Wars. It's going to be interesting. Now we're going to walk by all the anti-Trump supporters. We're going to push the protesters on to that side of the street away from y'all so they can get to their buses quietly and not cause any problems. Why do they have buses? And then, yeah, they got bussed in. They got bussed in, huh? Wow, that's gold for me right there. Thank you. Hey, was it George Soros? Wow, so... You didn't have to go to work. That's pretty crazy, huh? That's right. Anti-Trump supporters bust in. And then once they're all out of the way and secured on the buses and, and out of the picture, we'll open this up. Y'all can they all mosey to your cars. Thank you. All right, not a problem. Excuse me, sir. Yep. Wow. Love it, love it, love it, love it. You don't get something like that every day. Everyone pushed into the sidewalk area. We're gonna open up the uh, sidewalk on that side to let the protesters uh, get out of the area here and towards where they got dropped off and picked up. So that way, there's no problems. There's a peaceful resolution. Once they're out of the out of the way here, we're gonna open this up, y'all. What, what, what about the what about the protesters that are on this side? They're like them, they're paid protesters. Paid pro well, yeah. Right now, they're not causing any problems. They're not. So they're not. Not. You're not gonna threaten me. You're not gonna threaten me right in front of a fucking cop. You're gonna get that bitch's okay. eyelashes. Guys, we're not going to have any. Hey, let's chat. Don't do that. Yeah. 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 Ye
Everybody in the parking lot over there won't let anybody out. There are people like trying to jump the fence well, they to get got out caught. there. They were letting some of their cronies in, and then this guy complained, and then they wanted to change everything up. You know, like I watched it happen. They let like five or six people. They're letting people from that side come over here. I eat this guy right here. Yeah. Just walk right through here, but nobody can go over there because no, they're, they're scared. To, they're, they think no, that we're gonna do something. No, no. What they're no doing? They, they separated the Trump and the, yeah, but they're, the, wait, they're, hold on. And then they're letting them. They're they're letting. They're wanting to clear this area as much as possible. And they're letting people through. So they're letting people out because they. USA, 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 USA. Trump supporters are blocked over there on the other side of that south side ballroom, it looks like. They're allowing them there. Now they've completely shut us off. This is supposed to be the pro-Trump side. They won't even let us get over there. No, they're not letting anybody get over there. Oh, so, I mean, so do you have to go through that? Don't make sense. We went all the way around and came up. Yeah, they're making it harder for us to get over to our side. Yeah, I know. So now you can't even get down there to where the the Trump guys are over there. On the other side. But everybody else can come over here from that side, but they won't let people come over here. This, well, this was the Trump side, but what happened is, is people came over here and the police blocked it off. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial 
See the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. It funds our broadcast and allows us to travel the country, travel the world, really, to bring you the latest news and information. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again next week.